Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. Our temperatures have warmed into the 60s here this afternoon despite a strong northwesterly wind. Lots of sunshine helping to keep those temperatures quite a bit warmer here as we got into the afternoon. Low 60s is where we sit for many of us. 61 in DeKalb and in Rochelle, 63 in Rockford and in Janesville, 59 degrees in Monroe, Wisconsin. The only spot that is not quite at that 60 degree mark. A couple spots are still seeing those stronger winds, though a bit calmer from where they were earlier. Many wind gusts now below 35 miles per hour, but we are still seeing those somewhat stronger winds just lasting a bit longer here into the evening. We also have a few isolated showers and even a few rumbles of thunder that have been developing off to the north and to the northeast of the Rockford region, though they are continuing to calm down, leaving us underneath clearing skies into the night. Temperatures will fall into the upper 30s underneath those clear skies. Winds shifting out of the south bring us much warmer weather as we get into the weekend. I'll let you know just how many days we could string together that we see 70 degrees. Coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Community members come together to bring awareness to child abuse. The event that was held to remind residents to stand up and seek help when it happens. A plus Loves Park Police work to protect seniors from scams. Officials say this time of year is especially busy for fraudsters. And a Belvedere apartment complex is renovated to house seniors and veterans. The project aims to help meet the need for more affordable housing. Live from WTVO 17. This is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm David Greenberg. The state line community comes together hand in hand to bring awareness to child abuse. The annual Hands Around the Park was held in Belvedere this morning. Blake Dietz was there and Blake, it's a somber reminder of the number of kids still impacted by this issue. Yeah, it is Mimi. Abuse victim advocates told me they see hundreds of child abuse cases in Boone County every year. And with so many more unseen Spreading awareness is critical to getting victims the help they need. At Belvedere's Big Thunder Park, community members wrapped a ribbon around the park's gazebo in recognition of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Advocates say awareness events like this play a huge part in giving the community tools to recognize and report abuse or volunteer to help victims. It can be anyone, that it could be your next door neighbor, it could be your child's best friend in, in kindergarten, it could be the family that you sit next to in church. Um, it happens everywhere and it could be someone that you know that you're close to. Of the full story coming up from the event, coming up at 6. David? All right, Blake, looking forward to it. Thank you. A state watchdog found more than $7 million in improper PPP loans were given to state employees. According to the Sun-Times, the Illinois Office of Executive Inspector General found 277 cases of wrongdoing involving the loans, including state workers paying kickbacks to brokers who process their fraudulent claims. Most of the confirmed fraud cases involved employees at the Department of Human Services, the Department of Corrections, DCFS, and there were three cases in the Illinois State Police. PPP loans were intended for businesses struggling during the pandemic. A local law enforcement agency provides tips to seniors to make sure they don't fall victim to scams. The Loves Park Police Department held the free session this morning. Seniors learned about some of the popular scams thieves use to steal personal information or take their money. That includes Medicaid or Medicare scams, gift card scams, and the grandparents scam. In that case, a fraudster will call claiming to be the victim's grandchild and say they need money. Seniors also learned about safe online shopping. Organizers say right now is a time that seniors should be on guard. Especially around this time of the year with the tax returns and everything, that the scammers, they catch them and they catch them off guard, they get them scared and they want to uh, try to get their benefits. We're starting out small, but we're, we want to continue this program throughout the uh, summer and fall. If you become a victim of fraud, officials say call the police. And for a list of current scams in our area, you can contact the Better Business Bureau. Well, the Better Business Bureau is also warning about a scam that high school seniors should be on the lookout for. Prom season is nearly here. Scammers, they'll create fake websites to sell prom-related items. Agency says prom goers should do your research before making any purchases. When buying or renting your outfit, the BBB recommends checking the quality of the clothing to make sure there's no damage. Also say to look at the company's return policy, especially if you're renting. This way you're not surprised by any hidden fees. 
One state senator wants to strengthen the state's laws around hazing. His proposal would eliminate what he says is a loophole in the law by clearing up the concept of consent. Senate Democrat Steve Stadelman said right now if a person accepts an invite to an event or agrees to go somewhere and then is hazed, that could be considered consent, which in turn allows people being charged with hazing crimes to avoid consequences. His bill would make it clear that a person giving consent in these cases does not prevent the person from being prosecuted. Just kind of read uh, media reports and some of the uh, legislation that was passed in other states, and I kind of agreed there was this loophole in Illinois' uh, laws that could strengthen um, you know, the, the, the legislation we have. Stottleman pointed to recent high-profile controversies in Illinois as a reason for filing the bill. A recent investigation found the Eastern Illinois University swim team violated the university's hazing policies. Well, for the second time this week, the Biden administration announced it is wiping out more student loans. More than a quarter million borrowers will get an email from the White House today telling them their debt has been canceled. This round wipes out an additional $7.4 billion for some 277,000 borrowers. Several states are now suing to block said programs. Earlier this week, President Biden announced a proposal that would eliminate student debt for more than 30 million borrowers, which could go into effect as early as this fall. Illinois lawmakers consider a bill aimed at protecting librarians in the state. Threats against public libraries have been increasing. Last fall, a string of bomb threats temporarily closed some libraries across Illinois. The proposal would put threatening a library employee in person or on social media on the same level as threatening a public official. This could raise the penalty from a Class 3 felony to a Class 2. Critics of the bill are skeptical of how much safety the measure would actually provide. The bill awaits a second reading and debate on the State House floor. A new apartment complex is now open to offer seniors and veterans in the area affordable housing. A grand opening was held at Pearl Place in Belvedere this afternoon. The 56 units were recently renovated by Gorman and Company. It was a $12 million project. Former high school and junior high was converted into apartments back in 1997. There are now one and two bedroom units with more accessible bathrooms. Those behind the project say it was critical to keep affordable housing available in the area. There were more than a thousand seniors in need of affordable housing and that list is growing. Our, our population continues to age. So we know that there was a need for at least a thousand units of senior affordable housing. We preserved 56. And so there's a lot more work to do here in Belvedere to ensure seniors have the access to safe, secure and affordable housing. But that, that was a big deal for the city of Belvedere. About 40% of the population in the region is what's called housing burdened, meaning they're spending more than half of their income on housing-related expenses. Lawmakers in Washington debate the budget for the Defense Department. Up next, some officials say there's not enough money for missiles in the current spending request. Our temperatures have warmed into the 60s, quite a bit above average for this time of year. We'll be even warmer than that, though, when we head into the weekend with plenty of sunshine. I'll let you know when that trend is expected to change and when we could see storms on the way coming up in just a few minutes. All lawmakers on Capitol Hill discussed funding for missile defense in the coming fiscal year. Some expressed concerns that the Department of Defense's budget request is not putting enough toward the programs. Maddie Beer Temple reports. Some lawmakers worry there is not enough money for missiles in the Defense Department's 2025 budget request. The overall level of funding is inadequate given today's threat environment. The Pentagon's Missile Defense Agency is asking for $10.4 billion, a more than $400 million decrease from the year before. Our prioritization of decisions will maximize missile defense system capability, capacity, and readiness. Massachusetts Democrat Seth Moulton demanded answers to the choice to cut funding. I just don't understand the rationale behind uh, many of these cuts. And Republican Congressman Dale Strong from Alabama criticized President Biden for the agency's request. I worry that the Biden administration is uh, wanting to dismantle the significant industrial cap uh, capacity that has um, been built up over decades. Defense Department officials say the lower request is partly because of a recent law passed that limited some defense spending. We had to work within that ceiling 
You had uh, must-pay bills, payroll increases, health care programs, child support. Seems like missile defense is an area that we do not want to be cutting. When the budget request was first released in March, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said, quote, we made difficult but responsible decisions focusing on maintaining our military's readiness and taking care of our personnel. Congress has until October to decide on the Pentagon's budget request. In Washington, I'm Maddie Beer Temple. Well, it's been a windy, warm day with highs making it into the 60s. Yeah, but after the break, Jordan tells us when we could see some temperatures climb as we head into the weekend. Now, your first warm weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. A bright sunny afternoon across the state line, but that was also in addition to some very strong winds out of the northwest. We've seen those winds gusting even close to 40 miles per hour throughout parts of the afternoon. And we still see some fairly strong wind gusts even here late into the afternoon and early evening as well. Our SkyTrack camera overlooking Freeport brought to us by the Rockford Career College is showing off that flagpole and a strong west or northwest wind, which is helping to bring at least what generally would be a cooler air mass into the region. But as we have another ridge working its way in not too far away, it's actually not too bad with our temperatures. We've seen those temperatures reaching well into the 60s here for the afternoon. Our winds are a bit calmer than where they were even just last hour or so with many of those wind gusts now sitting in the lower 30s for the 30 mile per hour mark. 32 mile per hour, the current wind gust in DeKalb, 33 miles per hour in Rochelle as well as Rockford. 31 mile per hour is currently the wind gust out in Freeport. We've also seen a little bit of these scattered or very isolated showers and even a few rumbles of thunder in some portions of the state line. They were mainly focused off to the north and to the northeast of the viewing area and continue to shift now out of the region as our trough that has brought us the windier weather and the cloudier weather even over the last few days continues to move out of the region, giving us a lot of this ridging, which will bring us now with a lot of sunshine and much warmer weather as we head into the weekend. That's what we have to preview as we have a whole lot of nothing going on across the entire central United States. This is where we have that ridge of high pressure centered. As that inches a little bit closer to the region, it's going to help to bring us that much warmer weather as well as much quieter weather here as we head into the weekend. In the meantime, though, we still have that strong northwest wind with many of our temperatures sitting in the 60s and in the low 60s. Upper 60s and 70s, though, is kind of what we have to start looking forward to as that ridge works its way a little bit closer here to the region. Temperatures locally at the moment are in the 50s and 60s. 59 degrees the current temperature in DeKalb as well as Monroe. Uh, 63 degrees in Rockford, 61 in Rochelle, 62 in Freeport. And look at where our dew points are currently sitting. They are down in the 30s, indicating some much drier air in place, which is what has helped that sunshine to bring our temperatures up as quickly as it has here for the afternoon. But as a result, that will then bring our temperatures down just as quickly as they warmed as we fall way back down into the upper 30s for the overnight lows tonight underneath clear skies. Winds will start to shift, especially early tomorrow coming back out of the south. That will bring our temperatures up well into the upper 60s and even close to the 70 degree mark for many of us. Mid 70s possible downstate across central Illinois and a couple locations in the southern plains could even touch close to the 80 degree mark. That is similar to the weather that we'll, we will then see on Sunday. We do have a backdoor cold front coming in that may bring our temperatures down just a little bit here as we get into the afternoon on Sunday. But otherwise, we could be seeing temperatures getting close to that 80 degree mark there for the afternoon very similar to what some spots will be seeing downstate. Now, I don't think it's very likely that we see widespread 80 degrees, but at least a couple spots could get close to that mark during the afternoon. If we reach that 80 degree mark on Sunday, that would break our record so far for this calendar years. Our warmest day has only been 78 degrees so far, and that was on February 27th. We've only seen seven days so far this year that have reached that 70 degree mark, and I'm forecasting five of them in a row here this week. We continue to see that warmer weather, and we also have a chance for some storm to talk about as well. 70 degrees for tomorrow, 78 for Sunday, much warmer overnight lows as well. But we do have that chance for some rain starting especially Monday night going into Tuesday. A couple of storms, particularly Tuesday afternoon and evening, could even reach close to those severe limits before we eventually see that system moving out of the area and bringing cooler weather toward the end of the week.
All right, Jordan, thanks. Wisconsin next with sports. The Ice Hogs are ready for a key battle tonight in Michigan that could be a preview of their opening playoff series. And we'll hear from another Ice Hog who's ready to make his NHL debut tonight with the Blackhawks. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. The Ice Hogs have been chasing the Grand Rapids Griffins for weeks now for that second place spot in the NHL Central Division and the number two playoff seed that comes with it. That could be within, they could be within one point in the Griffins after tonight. The two teams are set to go at it in Michigan. The Hogs trail the Griffins by only three standing points. The Hogs won 16 in their last 19 games. And we're likely to see Jackson Stauber in goal tonight. He'll be going after his 12th straight win. Brett Cini could join the 60-point club tonight. He's one point away from that. Only five players in Ice Hogs HL history have reached that mark in one season. The Ice Hogs won't have defenseman Ethan Del Mastro tonight. He was called up by the Blackhawks yesterday. He will make his NHL debut when he suits up for the Blackhawks tonight against the Predators. He says, yeah, he has a few jitters. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, I think uh, coming to this uh, arena, you know, you start to realize um, that you're, you're going to be playing your first. But uh, I think once kind of you get out on that uh, ice for the first rookie lap, I think that's when it really sets in. But it's exciting. You know, Ethan's had a really good year down in the minors this year and uh, first year pro. And I think uh, it's great that, um, uh, you know, he's getting a chance to do it at home. Sometimes it's on the road and a little less melodramatic. It's a little melodramatic, I guess. And uh, so hopefully... Uh, you know, we're ramped up here to have a good finish at home, and it'll be great for uh, a young guy to have a good start like that. Well, the White Sox and Cubs will both be back in action tonight. The Sox will host the Reds. The Cubs will open up a series in Seattle. Jordan Wicks will pitch for the Cubs. One of the most accomplished baseball players in NIU history has died. Fritz Peterson has passed at the age of 82. The Mount Prospect native played for NIU in the early 1960s. He went on to play 11 seasons in the major leagues, starting with the Yankees and then with the Indians and the Rangers. In 1970 with the Yankees, he won 20 games. He won at least 10 games in seven seasons. Fred VanVleet won't see playoff action this season with the Houston Rockets, but boy, is he ending the regular season with a flourish. Last night against the Jazz, he scored a season-high 42 points. 20 came in the first quarter. He made nine shots from behind the arc. That 42-point effort came on the heels of his 37-point effort Tuesday night against the Knicks. At Sports, we'll be right back. Well, we had a nice day in the state line today, but I think a lot of us are really looking forward to this yeah, weekend absolutely. forecast. Right, and if there's anything that you need to do that gets outside, uh, spring cleaning, anything like that, this is the weekend to do it because next weekend it's going to be a little bit cooler. Wow. Um, Good morning. I was going to say, the seven-day forecast, not only do we have 70s on there, but this weekend we got right. the sun icon, which yeah. is, you know, just great to see the blue skies. Didn't have to worry about adding any rain icons, at least for Saturday and for Sunday. Yeah. We do have some changes, though, as we get into the next couple of days after that. We do have a few isolated showers that have been ongoing for at least the last couple of hours on the First Horn Interactive Radar from Rockford Glass and more. Those continuing to move out of the area off to our south and our southeast, leaving us underneath clear skies tonight. Temperatures will fall into the upper 30s, but will rebound back close to the 70 degree mark during the day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, highs in the upper 70s on Sunday, but a chance for some thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. Thanks, Jordan. World News tonight's up next. We'll see you back here at 6.